This is a podcast. We were talking about raccoons before we got started, and um, I feel it necessary to share my raccoon in my attic story. This is not a classic intro. Who are we? I know. No, we're gonna, we said we were going to do the intros after. <laughs> I got, I, I panicked. I saw that little red flashing light, and I panicked, okay? Cut me some slack. It's Thursday. Um, we moved into this house, and we, uh, we got a dog shortly thereafter. We moved in in September, got a dog in November, and then it got cold, you know, in Florida, like the 40s. And... Um, in the middle of the night, we heard this like scratching coming from the ceiling, and Rhonda's like, "There's something in the attic." I'm like, "No, it's uh, no, there's nothing in the attic." And then the dog is like uh, up and barking at the ceiling. Crap! So I go into the garage. I think the punchline is already ruined. We already know it's a raccoon. But I go into the garage and I, I pull like the ladder down and I grab a flashlight and a hammer. And because I live in Florida, I'm just wearing my underpants because that's you know how you sleep in Florida, I guess. So I climb up into the attic with these things, flashlight and hammer. And Sorry, what did you think the hammer was for? <laughs> I don't, I wasn't sure. I just knew there was something special. Okay. I needed some kind of defense and it was the first thing I saw. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. I just, I needed something like to Adjust defend in myself case. in case I was attacked. Like, you know, basically naked, right? And so I, I pick up this like flashlight that I'm looking around and, uh, and then like over like a little beam, like this little raccoon face pops up and like for a second we both froze like, and the, I, like, I could tell he was thinking the exact same thing I was thinking, like, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> um, and so I'm like, I, I don't know what to do with this. So I climbed back down and I folded the ladder up and I left it like open and cracked the garage like three inches and put dog food on the floor and uh, went back to bed. <laughs> Rod is like, what did you do? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let it ride. But, yeah. <laughs> But it was gone by morning, so I'm not sure if it went back the way it came or what. I figured out where it, it accessed the attic and sealed that off, the housing situation. But that's my raccoon in the attic story. I took well, a flashlight and a hammer and an underwear. <laughs> the story could have ended with you closing the stairs and then being like, and that's why we moved away from that house. <laughs> that's why we don't live there anymore. <laughs> um, were you talking about uh, raccoons and garbage, uh, garbage collection devices? Uh, when I, when we were, it wasn't we weren't camping. We were we were glamping because this, this I think was mm -hmm. the trip when we um, were uh, rented a yurt for uh, Aaron's birthday. So I was taking the trash out and they have you know the trash, it's in a you know reg regular metal can. And I was taking stuff out and dumping it in the trash. And I opened the trash can, and there's a raccoon staring at me, in the in the trash can with the lid on, just like you, just like you know, yeah. in there. He's like staring up at me, like, and I'm like, holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, well, I don't. I mean, I I I have this trash in my hand that I need to throw <laughs> away, and there's a raccoon here, so I guess that I'll put the trash in. <laughs> and then tip the can over <laughs> so the Did, raccoon can come out i guess you still have a job to do at the end of the day you're like this trash needs to go in this man <laughs> go somewhere could, could he not he i'm assuming it was a male raccoon because like i don't know could he not like climb the trash when you put it in to get out i don't it know was, that would chip i, I don't know put the lid back I, on you're like hey, i know it was one of those. I would have the lid off for sure. It was one of those metal trash cans, yeah. um, and and yeah, I don't, I don't think he could have like climbed because there wasn't anything to grab. It looked obviously like it was the way that it was positioned with like um, the hill and whatever. It was obviously easier to get in than yeah. it was to get out. <laughs> <laughs> you open the lid, and he was like, "Oh, thank God, I've been waiting for you." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Someone has finally come to rescue me. <laughs> it was like a Chewbacca moment. Like now he's like. Sworn a life oath, oath to oh, life oath, a life oath to you. So, yeah. yeah. You, no. you notice there's like raccoons following you wherever you go. <laughs> we did like have. They all uh, poke their heads out from like behind the trees. Like he's here. He's chosen here. one. It's him. We it's did him. have a couple raccoons uh, at the house uh, 
I don't know, about a month ago, um, one of our one of our cats was like staring out the window like really intently, um, just like. Um, so there's obviously something out there, and we couldn't really see it. So I turned out the lights. It was late; everyone was was in bed, and we were we were on our way to bed. And um, turn out the lights, and yeah, there's two raccoons. Like like the cat is right here with the window, and the raccoons are like right here. I mean, they're like literally like just staring at each other. <laughs> Well, do you think the raccoons are like? Do you think they're recognizing each other as like same but different? They're being like that cat is weird. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, uh, that particular cat of ours does kind of look raccoony, so I mean, it's possible. So, there's a chance sure. the raccoons are like, oh, that one's inside. It's stuck inside. <laughs> um, they were. They also looked really young. I mean, like I, we've 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 had raccoons in the neighborhood, and they get pretty big and these were smallish like maybe like adolescent so like it looked like they just had no fear and they're just like <laughs> you won't hurt us yeah. you're like us <laughs> you can do nothing and i like i tried like making noise to like scare them off um and they're like <laughs> they like jingle something back at you <laughs> you're doing my um my neighbor's lawn treatment is here so jude might have something to say in a minute just fair warning oh. Oh, we're now. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, this is a podcast. And, uh, <laughs> Didn't we cover that? I think we covered that already. Um, that's Gary. Those I'm our strongest Allison. Oh, uh, we we're on the internet uh, at binaryjazz.us or on Twitter, binaryjazz. Uh, and Not Twitter. Our handles right. that are on the website. Hey, quit. They're welcome guests. Lay down. <laughs> I need more of Gary muttering inconceivable things in the background of my life. <laughs> I, think, I think so. Um, my project manager uh, was in a Disney hotel with her dogs uh, yesterday for the, for because she's in Florida, um, and so and and her dogs don't travel uh, with her often. Um, so like her dogs are freaking out because there's people and whatever and they're bark, 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 bark. And she's like super embarrassed about, about them and apologizing constantly. But she, at some point, and one of her, and one of her dogs is named Shira, obviously. Yes. Uh, and she's, That's awesome. so at some point during a call, I mean, it was an internal call. It wasn't with the client or anything, but at some point during a call, she's like, Shira, get a hold of your life. <laughs> get a hold of your life. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> My cat. <laughs> I need someone to yell that at me once in a while. Exactly. Yeah. My cat, I think we have not had Max on any calls. Um, I think we talked about how, like, how he's like has Alzheimer's now and forgets like to push people home or where the water dishes and stuff and he meows. Yesterday it literally sounded like someone was like taking just like ringing out the cat, like <laughs> um, I was just on an internal call as well, but it, it's like come on. Seriously. <laughs> I threw so, a blanket over the dog, now he seems fine. The topic this week that I'm bringing to the table, and I have to admit it was a topic that I had to double check whether we had done it or not already, Ooh. which is a good sign as well, because I was like, oh, we've hit the number of episodes where it's like I have to make sure that this isn't even a thing that I'm misremembering. Yeah. Um, but the topic this week is ultra crepidarian. Ultra I'll use it in a sentence. We are all ultra crepidarian. <laughs> ultra crepidarian. <laughs> uh, okay. Ultra. I think it just means bipedal. Crepid. C R E P I D. Mm-hmm. Arian. A R I A N. Correct. Chris wins the spelling bee. Yay! <laughs> the spelling bee portion of binary jazz is now. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use it in a sentence? Yes, we are all ultra crepidarian. I well, still think ultra back means to that, that spelling bee documentary where they interview the kids, and the one little girl's like, "I have other hobbies other than spelling. Like, I'm a vegetarian, and I drink coffee, and like." <laughs> so I was like, "These aren't hobbies," and also you're like eight. <laughs> Also, spelling isn't really a hobby. Yeah. 
<laughs> I should put that on my resume. Not that I need a resume, but I should spelling put Spelling isn't a hobby. My hobbies are spelling. <laughs> no, I mean, I do it frequently. I guess it is a hobby at this point. But like, I also don't consider my vegetarianism a hobby. Like, I'm like, no, I don't think so either. Yeah, that's not it's a hobby. It's more of a way of life. It's just, I mean, like, it's something I do, but I'm not actively got a vegetarian today. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I, need my 30, I need my 30 minutes of vegetarian vegetarian kind of practice yeah I don't know. maybe yeah. maybe some people do it's like learning to play the flute right like yeah yeah you gotta log in your time hmm. i mean i guess i guess one could argue that the longer you are a practicing vegetarian the better you are at making vegetarian food yeah good choices that's true. But, um, yeah, it's not a hobby. <laughs> the cooking part could be a hobby. You could be yeah. like, I I'm, I excel at vegetarian cuisine or something. Yes, that's a very valid point. Yeah. But cooking is a hobby. Like, like I'm really good at subset. eating vegetarian food. Yeah. If you make vegetarian food, I will be the one that consumes it. I mean, <laughs> on the same... My hobbies are condiments. <laughs> <laughs> cooking, cooking is a hobby but also not because if you don't cook you kind of don't eat i mean yeah, you could mustards. like get food like the, like take out all the time but then eventually i assume you'll run out of money yeah unless or you're like good at good at preparing pre-made food yeah right Oof. you're like i can defrost the hell out of that <laughs> microwave dinner yep I have a soup button on my microwave that I used for chili the last few days for lunch. I never use those buttons. Yeah, no. Most of the time they're wrong. I, I use the I use the defrost button on on this uh, lentil stew that we had in the freezer that was like you know frozen solid like a brick of of stew, and I I, de I had it on defrost for for ten minutes because. Uh, I knew that if I, because the last time I, I tried to defrost something that was frozen, it like actually kind of killed the microwave, like it, it did a power surge. <laughs> so like I knew that if I did it like for, for full power for an extended period of time, it would like overheat or something. So Listen here. it might be time for a new microwave. I'm just going to yeah. throw that out there. I mean, it did come with the house and we've been here for a couple of years and wasn't the best, but whatever. I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> I defrosted it for 10 minutes and it was still a brick. You're like, it's let's replace just... our original microwave. And it's all about her expectations. Like if you're not um, expecting stew, if you're expecting a brick, it's true. I could let's throw back up a little though. A window, <laughs> this stew. I feel like I've answered a question that I've been wondering for a long time. What is chili soup? And functionally, no. because I can use the soup button no. to, re to rewarm chili in my microwave, it is in fact a soup. No. Chemically speaking, according no. to my microwave, it is. I don't and care. Who might about argue microwave. with the microwave? Your microwave. Your microwave. I'm arguing with your microwave. So you're arguing it's not a soup, it's a stew, and that's different? Yes. Oh, wow. You're that's saying like, it's a stew, though. Yeah. I don't think it's a stew. Nor do I think it's a soup. I'm just saying that... But isn't stew like a subset of soup? Not... I feel like I it don't, would be the other direction. What's the, um, what's the umbrella that connects soup and stew? Is there one? Or is it completely... Not the amount of liquid. Eat it in the bowl. <laughs> so milk I is... I eat everything in the saying. bowl, dude. <laughs> Basically, um, all of our food is bowl contained. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have more chili today for lunch. It has nothing to do with this conversation. It's still not I'm a soup. i have more chili. I, I'm going to push the soup button, which takes four minutes and 25 seconds, but it, it like fluctuates the power level throughout. Oh. Like, yeah. Otherwise, I just hit the 30-second button twice for everything else I need to warm up, and then open it when I feel like it's probably warm enough. But it's soups. more of a, a Jedi mind trick where you're like, I sense that it is done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, soups are weird. I heard something it. pop, so that probably means everything in there is getting ready to right. pop. You know, like that beam exploded. <laughs> probably time to get it out. Soups are weird because if you don't cook it long enough, it'll be cold in the middle. But if you cook it too long, it's like boiling when you take it That's out. That's where this button is amazing. Yeah. It comes out uniformly warm. But you don't even have to stop it and stir it or something midway. No, it just comes out ready to go and then I throw a bunch of hot spicy stuff in it and then 
some cornbread and why is the hot decision. spicy stuff not already in this chili i'm very well, confused it, by your chili yeah so <laughs> my, it's just my soup chili. and it's not spicy like what's going it on is, it's got a little spice but i like it spicier um the kids don't eat like crazy spicy yeah, so when it sure. comes out i could add there's no reason i couldn't add the spice before throwing it in there it's just comes out and I'm like, oh yeah, I want this to be spicier when I taste it to confirm that it's warm. So I throw chili powder in and some um, ghost pepper chili flakes and Ooh. some, yeah, those will light you up. You gotta be careful with those. Um, what else do I throw in there? Something else. And then a bit of cheese, cornbread. I'm going to be eating lunch when this is all over. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we got these seeds for these, like they're, Trinid Trinidadian chocolate hot peppers and they're like super spicy mm -hmm. and we don't know what we're going to do with them <laughs> like we're growing them and we're feeling very successful but we're also just like what are we going to do with them when they're ready because they're too spicy for us to eat basically could you make a jelly out of them like a spicy jelly or is we it, were looking at recipes hot. and we're we've made our own hot sauce before so we were thinking of going that route but trying not to like gas ourselves out of the kitchen like we did prior that that that's, that's the challenge thing. Yes. yeah yeah so we'll we'll see what the weather's like i would like the other thing a is a photo of you wearing a gas mask in the <laughs> kitchen i on i thought well what did we call we called it pepper lung because it was just like <laughs> it was horrible we thought it was such a great like group activity and it was it was really Always. fun and like the hot sauce was amazing um yeah. but as far as practical and also the the pan we used to simmer the hot peppers basically made everything spicy for months afterwards it's amazing <laughs> it was amazing it was like kind of lovely but also just like sometimes you don't want to have something be spicy like these pancakes don't really need to be yeah. that spicy so it's like the pan just became like a no this is a savory this is a savory meal pan <laughs> yeah. um not to derail the topic remind me what, or to derail the conversation remind me what the topic is today ultra crepidarian ultra crepidarian or ultra crepidarianism oh <laughs> That's the really act of walking on two legs. That's the yeah. hobby. That's when ultra crepidarian, you're an ultra crepidarian as a hobby. Yeah. Um, um, I was going to say with your pepper problem, <laughs> possible, pe possible pepper, possible pepper problem. Um, you can also just dry them. That's and, true. And then, you, and then you can like sprinkle things. And, like yeah. Ever so slightly. <sighs> Which, because we, we have a ton of peppers and and like you gary like the kids don't eat stuff that's super spicy and we do and we like when we got plants for the garden we got a ton of peppers and now they're all producing and now we're like oh crap we have all these peppers that we're not going to put in everything because like, i yeah. tried putting i tried putting one jalapeno in something and like my daughter just like revolted shut down um, yeah so <laughs> um and she's she's like a super taster anyway like she's like super sensitive to spicy foods like she'll taste oh. spice in things that just have ginger um like it's, oh it's see really reactive i find ginger to be like just an offensive flavor like, sp <laughs> like spicy i can't handle ginger it's crazy I don't, like spicy spice doesn't have any ginger i'm like oh wow that's way over the top it doesn't take much ginger and i'm like, why so would you anyway something like this anyway. uh we have we have all these peppers that are just sitting there and and yeah our plan is probably just gonna let them dry and and then and then we can like sprinkle them in things yeah mm. Like to get um, there's a pepper. There's we usually get uh, Thai chilies, um, which are really spicy. Um, jalapenos, mm -hmm. um, and then um, there's a pepper called Satan's Kiss, which we've gotten several times. It's kind of like ball shaped. Nice. Oh, oh I think cute. I've seen those. Okay. Yeah. And there's other there's other similar peppers um, to Satan's Kiss. I think the ones that we got now were not called Satan's Kiss when we got them, but they basically are the same pepper i mean it looked exactly the same and they're super spicy so um yeah we like to, we also like to try like random things that sound interesting i think that's where satan's kiss came because like oh, that sounds cool <laughs> that's why we bought ones called ring of fire purely yeah we got ring of fire one. before yeah ring of fires are good <laughs> i was like well we're clearly getting these <laughs> <laughs> how can we not how can we not because i'm gonna yeah. just be singing the song and being annoying exactly. every time yeah i water the place <laughs> is there <laughs> <laughs> are peppers easy to maintain uh yeah fairly yeah. i mean i don't consider myself the greatest gardener and we're working with containers as well so we don't actually have like land <laughs> my neighbors are, 
our peppers not done well with anything. We've we've always done we've always um, had really good luck with with peppers, even even when the soil was not very good, um, and yeah. and even when other things didn't do as well. The bell peppers have always been really tricky. In fact, um, Aaron's like about to throw in the towel on bell peppers next year because we've tried and tried and tried, and we have bell peppers now, but they're like tiny, tiny. They're like this big, um, which is cool. I mean, throw it in whatever, but like, it's not really enough bell pepper to like, when you put it in something, they're like, super you can't thin. stuff it. Yeah. yeah. There's not really enough bell pepper to do, to have, to taste like a bell pepper and to be, you know, mm. a rewarding bell pepper, but they're it purple. It doesn't feel like when we did bell peppers, it was the same thing where it's just like, it didn't really feel like the output yeah. matched up to had, our labor. Yeah. We had one year where we had bell peppers that were actually decent, and then never again. We've never had bell peppers work. Um, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, purple. Peppers purple. also work for us because um, raccoons stay away from them, generally. I was going to ask, are peppers good to grow because, like, wildlife is like, eh, no thanks. Well, yeah. we're on the second floor, so our balcony is, like, a little hard for them to reach from the beginning anyway, but... um. Mm -hmm. And but like the random squirrel and raccoon will find its way for sure, but they tend to leave yeah. the peppers alone. Well, um, yeah, our neighbors did a bunch of, I mean, all sorts of things, and very limited success as a result of bugs and critters. And so I mean, our big our biggest problem lately, like we get we get critters in 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 our garden too, but they haven't really attacked the veggies that much this year. Um, we have like every once in a while we get like a tomato that looks like it's gotten. A bite taken out of it or something um and they oh, but sorry my bad <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just one <laughs> um just take but our, our big problem our big problem the last uh year or two is squash bugs which are these uh -huh. bugs that like basically devour the leaves of squashes specifically squashes and melons so yeah. last year they basically obliterated our squashes like almost all of them and we couldn't and and the only way to get rid of them besides like pesticides is like well the only way we could figure out to get rid of them before was individually picking them off and dumping them in in like soapy water because they're but soapy water kills them um aaron figured out recently that you can actually spray the plants with like castile soap um and it will be okay for their plant i mean not great but it'll kill the bugs or kill the eggs or whatever um, and then there's also like a more heavier duty version of that that you can buy that like lasts for like a week. So when we were gone for last week, um, she did that before we left and, and, and then sort of does the soap spray as a daily routine. And that kind of, I mean, we have squashes this year, <laughs> um, but we still have the bugs, um, but not as much as I think it's been in the past. So I think we're kind of getting that under control, but that's the big sort of pest thing that we have um, lately. We, we have a lot of stuff in our garden this year. A lot, a crap ton of tomatillos, like a crap ton. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, it, it's exciting own... to a certain point, and then you're like, oh. And God. then like that's a lot of tomatillos. But I mean, like to be fair, like our our chili recipe uses a, a ton of tomatillos. We just like also uses other things like bell peppers and tomatoes, and like <laughs> you want to have the things in the right amount. Yeah. Do you do you own a small trebuchet to get rid of some extra produce? I think that'd be a fun thing for the kids. Well, this experiment, like. Interestingly See how many blocks enough, we can launch this thing. Interestingly enough, uh, the kids did actually make or at least acquire a 3D printed trebuchet. So I can honestly say that I have a small trebuchet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like there's stuff to go. Stuff to um, ultra Crepidarian uh, is uh, ultra uh, as it means... Uh, it comes from derives from the term uh, derives from the word <laughs> Ultron, which is obviously a giant robot. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> so Ultra comes from Ultron. Um, also, the planet Ultron, where the giant robots uh, live. Isn't it Voltron? <laughs> Naturally, no. That well, yes, Voltron. But <laughs> <laughs> Voltron Crepidarian. <Ultra. laughs> And and uh, crepidarian is when you are nervously stepping into a room, you're being a crepidarian. Oh, you're creeping. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was part of the root there. I I was I couldn't figure out what it was, but that makes sense. So so ultra crepidarian. Actually, actually, ultra crepidarian is when you're especially nervously 
creeping into the room. introversion. Yep, you were introverted. <laughs> That definition is creepy in itself. Just like the visualization of someone like nervously creeping into a room. <laughs> like you walk in the door and you immediately like take a like a side step so that the wall is immediately behind you, you know? You're sure. not, it feels not like the moment before the a surprise party happens. <laughs> yes. So to use it in a sentence, before the surprise party, we are all trying to be ultra crepidarian. <laughs> I, it doesn't roll off the tongue very well. I think I just say sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> We're all trying to be sneaky. <laughs> but ultra crepidarian is like more sneaky. It's like the next level beyond sneaky. Are either Double of sneaky. you surprise party people? Like, would you welcome a surprise party? Oof. I am not, for the record. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be, I don't know that I'd be excited with a whole bunch of people jumping out of like the dark room and saying, surprise! Yeah. Um, but that wouldn't do it for me. Yeah, a, a I, party, after I picked myself up off the floor, a yeah. party that was a surprise, like a party that I did not expect there to be, would not necessarily be an unwelcome thing, assuming it wasn't like surprise. You don't like the jolt of it, but if someone was just like, I don't need the jump take. So if someone was like, we're going out to dinner, and then when you actually show up for dinner, it's really like, here's all your friends or yeah. something, that would be that's fine. Yeah. How are we at time already? Time flies all, when you're ultra crepidarian is the Exactly. So Gary, you need you need an ultra crepidarian meaning before we can actually get the real I started with it. It's bipedal. That's all it means. Bipedal. 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 Okay. Yes. It I this is very simple. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, don't overcomplicate this. This is not that big of a deal. You're way overthinking this and distracted <laughs> by peppers. That's that's how the show <laughs> rolls though, is, is I know. We overcomplicate it. I don't think I did. Today. And possibly undercomplicate it. Possibly. Um, <laughs> what is it? So, what does it mean? So an ultra crepidarian is someone who's presumptuous and offers advice or opinions beyond their sphere of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Ah, okay. That's, yeah, okay. Sure. I'm actually on a podcast about that. Don't that. <laughs> <laughs> it felt very apt. I feel like we are all crep <laughs> And I wanted to say crepidatious at one point. I don't actually know if that's a I, I'd buy it. Yeah, that's, that sounds legit. If you say it confidently, I'm, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, it works. Yeah. Um, it comes from a story where basically this famous painter was critiqued by a cobbler um, for the way that he painted a foot. And, and the painter was basically like, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Just because you make shoes doesn't mean you can critique me on this. And, I feel and like a shoemaker the is a pretty cobbler, good idea. And, and the though. painter's name was Crepid? <laughs> it was, I, I get the I get get the connection. Oh, the, so the <laughs> you're like I guess that's the idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Latin phrase is ultra crepidum, which means beyond the soul, like soul s o l e. Oh, so it's okay. like <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. <laughs> so don't basically don't, don't offer advice beyond what you <laughs> yeah. don't offer advice beyond the soul, beyond what you know. So the sneaky thing was not that far off because if you're being <laughs> ultra crepidarian, like very trepidatiously creeping into the room. There's that root that I was trying to find it yeah. there. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I, I knew, to be fair, I knew that trepidation and crepidation were not the same thing. I just wanted to. No, that's fair. I, <laughs> I wasn't trying to imply you didn't. I just <laughs> was trying to suggest that I, couldn't fire those synapses. <laughs> I was thinking about the uh, soup button on my microwave. <clears throat> <laughs> so uh, I can't stop thinking yeah. of soup. Yeah. Also, I think the Allison question we might have covered in an earlier episode, but we can refresh the answers. If not, I can't remember. I, if I can't remember the answer to the question, I figure we can re-ask. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so the Allison question in question. <laughs> is uh, if you were to going to participate in a competitive eating contest, what type of food would you choose? Ooh. I was thinking about this when because I, I saw it come in uh, in my email, and so <laughs> I, I've, I've I've had some time to think on the question. <laughs> Strategize, yeah. I mean, if the answer is not Dyson sphere, what are you doing? <laughs> it's not. But Dyson how many? You can't eat that many of them. They're just not made to. Yeah. 
consume uh, in a volume. At all. The eating, at all. Competition, at all. <laughs> the eating competition is whether or not you could consume it, period. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I think the only thing that I would like happily eat that much of is probably like ice cream. Oh, that's a funny answer. Com competitive ice cream eating contest. I would be there. Yeah, and yeah. it wouldn't ruin it for you. See, that's the thing. It's just like I thought. I mean, the thing is, like clever. with an ice cream eating contest, you could like like each like as, as soon as you finish like you know one of the little tubs of ice cream, you get another one that's a different flavor or something. Like there's an infinite array of flavors. As, and like these days, like back in the day, back in our day, um, there wasn't a whole lot of like really good tasting options for like dairy free ice cream yeah, that's true um and now there's all sorts of stuff like that's really really good um and <laughs> that's like, true you can vary it quite a bit you're like now i'm moving on to a coconut based one now i'm on almonds oh yeah 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 like oh. I, I i have a preference between like uh the the soy milk based ice cream or the cashew milk based ice cream you know like <laughs> i picture in a competitive eating contest and you're like oh but here's my rider i can only have certain <laughs> certain <laughs> I wonder if there is like any scientific study on um, how filling different like bases are. Mm. I wonder if that would be like a considered a mm. for ice cream some performance enhancing ice cream eating. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, you're not filling yourself up so as much. Yeah, I'm. I'm well, I, it's still the same so amount of calories, I think. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I don't actually know that I believe that to be true. I'm just wondering. I mean, ca wondering cashew, cashew means. milk, and and like coconut milk are still crap tons of calories, and almond milk isn't that much less. Well, and I feel like strategically, you're you would be eating fast enough that the filling nature wouldn't hit you mentally until. Yeah, that's beyond the point until so, you're sick yeah yeah <laughs> until that's it's too late until <laughs> yeah. so you're gonna regret it um also i, though, I, I mean competitive eaters train right so it'd be yeah. great you want to pick yeah. something that you want to train on i don't want a competitive eat i guess is my answer if i had to <laughs> it would be cookies big uh, the same thing as chris's idea i just yeah. love i mean we have um we had cookies in preparation um for the hurricane we had hurricane cookies um <laughs> and we ate them all before the hurricane showed up so we had to make them <laughs> I say we, like, I probably accounted for half of it because I was really like, we ate all the cookies. <laughs> yeah, we, we ate, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yep. I, I like that hurricane cookies is a thing. I think Me that hurricane too. cookies should be like just a, a universal thing. Every, whether or not the hurricane is going to affect you, you should just go out and get some hurricane cookies. Well, good news. There's one way out in the Atlantic. It's not going to affect anybody. So we better make cookies. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm going to go make some cookies out of solidarity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hmm. I have no idea what I, I could eat a lot of ice cream. So I feel like pretty confident in my ability to eat a lot of ice cream. I mean, maybe I just do an episode where we like all eat ice cream. <laughs> just that's the episode. I'd be fine with that. Look, I'm willing to do a themed ice cream episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I mean, yeah, it's 10, 10 in the morning, and I don't see a problem with this. I could eat a lot of cookies also, but I don't know that I could eat more cookies than someone else if, yeah, like, eat my body weight in, a, in a race of cookies, cookie eating. Well, that's the thing. Like, strategically, if I'm like, oh, if you're going to pick, like, a classic food, like, how many hot dogs could I eat? I don't know. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, like, the, the competitive eating strategy for eating hot dogs is, like, you dunk the bun in water, you're not really even eating the hot dog. So. Yeah. I'm, like, the guy at the end who's, like, can I get it Chicago style? Just for some variety. <laughs> this guy's not even trying. <laughs> do, you, do you have any different kinds of mustard? I really like mustards. I want to try some different mustards. <laughs> What's the opposite of a ringer? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be like, seated and lower. More like seat. a seat filler. Yeah. I just want a really nice hot dog with some like artisanal mustard. Tie on a bib slowly and scratch. <laughs> Everybody else is like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that. Foot long dogs, though, do they? They do it I, with like I, standard length hot dogs. Yeah. At that point, it's not competitive eating, it's just eating. It's just a meal. <laughs> I know, but it's a free hot dog, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, it's basically like an all you can eat buffet of hot dogs, except it's timed. Yeah, so like one. <laughs> one. I'm pretty confident I can hit that number in the time they have set up. I, they have a poutine eating contest, and 
I think the world championship was in Toronto last summer. I yeah. feel like I don't remember the res- like how much the why winners. Is, why is it always <clears throat> stuff that's totally going to give, but would totally give you indigestion on a good day anyway? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> and they they measured the end result in like kilo. It was just like it was a lot too much protein. Do, do, yeah. Um, you didn't go to like it. watch it, did you? No, I didn't. Although yeah, I don't know that I would want to watch that either. That's how yeah. I feel about all eating competitions. Yeah, I'd I, see, like, it wasn't necessarily the food; it was just the yeah. I'd want to see someone who's like super good at it, like um, Joey Chestnut or Kobayashi, or one of the like head competitive eaters. <laughs> I'm showing my hand way too much. As far as like, I read an article. <laughs> the people that make it look effortless, just like anything. I think that's always fascinating in any sport. Yeah, is the sport like the, the top of the. I don't know. It's on ESPN, so probably. Um, <laughs> the people are like at the top of their game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. They make it. They do make it look like they have. They have the fundamentals down so good that they, they make it look easy. It doesn't look like they're eating hot, like a hundred <laughs> hot, hot dogs. That's true. <laughs> I, I I still can't. I just can't. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ugh. I can't. I can't get past the 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 just mental headspace of. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.